Welcome everybody to the today's seminar. It is a kind of uh, internal seminar, as the speaker is uh, Thanos Zenos from our research center. Uh, you know that there is this line of research, the, I, I wouldn't say the last years, the many last years, uh, about Bomi and chaos. And today, Thanasis will present us uh, the advances that has uh, been done in the field in our institute. So there is no need for further introduction. You can start. So, hello to everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is just a quick refresh of our work with Professor Kondopoulos in the last about 10 years that I have been active in the field. Uh, the history of Bowman House um, in uh, our research center spans over than two decades. The first work uh, was made by Professor Kondopoulos and Christos Efthimiopoulos back in 2006. Okay, uh, you already know that there are many, many interpretations in, of quantum, in quantum mechanics. So there is actually a common drum of uh, yeah. dozens of interpretations that try to understand the nature of the wave function and try to understand how the nature works in the quantum framework and the quantum realm. Uh, here in uh, our center, uh, there is a long tradition in Bohmian mechanics, which is a tra trajectory-based quantum theory, which uh, predicts all the experimental results and makes the same, makes the same predictions about the quantum observables. Uh, with standard, a standard quantum mechanics. And since uh, it is a trajectory-based theory, it allows us to calculate trajectories. And these trajectories are, in general, ordered or chaotic. So, uh, Bohmian quantum mechanics uh, starts back in 1927 uh, from Louis de Bray. And, uh, and the official name is the Braille Bomb Quantum Mechanics. Okay. Um, but uh, it was reinvented in 1952 by David Bohm. And he was uh, very supportive of his theory. Um, and that's why now it is called Bohmian Quantum Mechanics. Um, let's start. Okay, the Bohmian trajectories are the, the main notion in Bohmian quantum mechanics. So if you take the usual psi, the wave function, which is the solution of the Schrodinger equation for a given problem, then you'll find if you make the polar decomposition mm -hmm. of the wave function, if you write it in a polar form and insert it back into the Schrodinger equation, then you find that uh, uh, you, you find these uh, equations of motion for the so-called Bohmian particles. Okay, so excuse me. Okay, okay. Uh, so every particle has uh, a certain det deterministic trajectory that follows, um, which is given by this formula. From the very first days of the Bohmian uh, theory, uh, it was already understood that whenever this G, which is actual psi r, psi, psi real, the real part of psi and the imaginary part of psi, so this is the modulus of the wave function, whenever C, G goes to zero, the Bohmian equations give uh, infinitely large velocities. So this is a hot spot for uh, instabilities and for uh, production of house. So in the first works of Bohmian quantum mechanics, how house um, it was supposed to be made somewhere around the nodal points. And these nodal points, since you have a time-dependent wave function, house in Bohmian quantum mechanics is yeah. not like the one in. Hamiltonian dynamics in an autonomous systems. Here we have non-autonomous uh, evolution since the right-hand side of uh, the dynamical uh, the well, system of okay. dynamical equations of the equations of motion is time dependent. Okay. The nodes of the psi 
of Psy play a crucial role in Bomiak mechanics since they are accompanied in general by hyperbolic fixed points. The X points, the X points were found here in our center and was proposed as the main mechanism, as the main uh, mechanism responsible for the production of house. The nodal points and their nearby X points form what we say, what we call um, nodal point X point complexes. These are characteristic structures of the Bohmian flow in the close neighborhood of the moving, the moving nodal point, the moving nodal point. So whenever you see a nodal point, which is N, okay, then in the frame of reference of this nodal point, of this moving nodal point at a certain time t, you find that somewhere close to N, there is an unstable point X, which is which there is an unstable point X and the Bohmian velocities uh, in this um, frame of reference of the moving nodal point have a, a characteristic form. So whenever a particle, a Bohmian particle comes close to such a structure, it gets scattered, it deviates from its trajectory uh, according to this uh, vector flow. Okay, imagine, picture that this flow is time dependent and at every time it has to be regenerated, to be refound. So it moves uh, in the configuration space, uh, it rotates the size of the, of the, of the nodal point X point complex, which is actually the distance between the node and the X point. It is also time dependent. And whenever the nodal point is fast, then the X point is very close to the end. The larger the velocity of the nodal point, the smaller the uh, distance between X and N. The, all these results have been found back in 2007 and 2009 by Professor Kondopoulos, Christos Ephemiopoulos, and Kostas Kalapopoulos. What is the motion? The motion of the nodal point is actually very, very difficult to be found. And if you want to find the nodal point, the coordinates of the nodal point as a function of t, then you have to solve simultaneously psi r, psi r, psi real equals psi imaginary equals zero. So you have two d, uh, so you have two equations of motion with two uh, variables. So in general, it can be uh, found, but it is very difficult to find it in a closed form most of the times. So that is why the, the, the first and the, uh, the first uh, main results from our center were based on a function, a wave function with a single nodal point. This, this wave function had the, had the advantage of uh, knowing perfectly analytically the, the, the coordinates of the nodal point in time. So it was very easy, it was very easy to monitor the motion of the nodal point in time. Sometimes the nodal point goes to infinity and then immediately comes from, from infinity because the, the formula has a, a denominator which is time dependent. It has a trigonometric form, sine oh, one plus something uh, times t. And whenever this time comes, the nodal point uh, goes to zero and immediately comes again from uh, from another direction. It's a, so if it doesn't shift infinity, yeah. what is the motion? Uh, oscillation? Uh, no, it's not an oscillation. It's a, um, I don't have here the the. Uh, just, just an idea. Imagine that in the in the case of a single uh, nodal point, the as you see here the the square, the nodal point. I have to show it here. Goes from here to here goes to infinity, then comes from downwards. So it makes like, like a curtain, a, a curtain size of movement. But this only for the single nodal point wave function. The, actually, the nodal points, the, the real uh, wave functions, the realistic wave function have inf many or infinitely many nodal points that are scattered around in space. And psi, psi squared is zero exactly at the nodal points. And psi squared is like a boiling water. So the, 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 the motion is very difficult. That is why all the, the basic uh, results here in our center and some basic results that were found by Parmenter and Valentine in 1997 and Frisk 
they were all based on the simplest wave function that allows the an easy monitoring of the motion of the nodal point. What is the blue curve? What's that? The blue curve. What's the blue curve? Ah, the, uh, here you have the eigen directions of the nodal of the X point. So you have uh, yes, the, the stable and the unstable directions of the nodal of the X point. And you see that one of them, this direction goes inside and makes a vortex, a vortex a, makes a very fast motion around the nodal point. The two directions are the same on the blue curve. It is a stable manifold. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in positive time, they go to the approach, the X point, yeah. while the, the red one is the unstable. And they... At the nodal point, they have zero probability to find a particle. At the, yes, zero. exactly. At the, at the nodal point, Psi equals zero. Okay. But very close to the nodal point, if you manage to make, if you decide to make a trajectory uh, to come close, very close to the nodal point, then you will see a very fast spiral motion. Actually, this is this kind of motion. You see a very, a very circular motion, very, very fast, very fast, up to a certain point where the nodal point decides to take, which is a mathematical point, okay, to uh, decides to, to go to infinity, and then the Bohmian particle cannot uh, follow it anymore. So it goes around, and then sometimes it, it may be captured by a, again by an, an, another nodal point or the same nodal point. This red curve doesn't go over the center. It goes towards the center, and sometimes the nodal point is a repeller, and sometimes uh, it is it is an attractor. Yes, it can go it can go up. To, yes, but the the, the integration is very very difficult. Yes, it's very very difficult. We have seen all the actually. I have learned anything I know about dynamical systems. I know it from Bohmian quantum mechanics. All the phenomena we have bifurcation, uh, bifurc bifurcation so. The nodal point becomes from uh, changes its uh, behavior from uh, attractor to repeller, and, and it is uh, everything uh, is uh, is made very fast. It, it is difficult because the, the flow is non-autonomous. Okay, so you have time periods where the flow does not uh, change uh, quickly with time, and very and sometimes and other periods which is very fast. That is why the integration of Bohmian trajectories. Is actually very demanding. So then, when I came in 2016 on the center, we tried to to link to make a link between quantum entanglement and uh, Bohmian quantum mechanics. So we wanted to study not only very very specific wave uh, very uh, very simple wave functions with only one nodal point or two nodal points. Uh, up to 2009, the works were up to Three nodal points, as far as I remember. Uh, so in 2019, we tried to understand more complex and more realistic, if you can say so, uh, cases. And one of these cases is the case of the coherent states of the harmonic oscillator. The, case, the coherent states of the harmonic oscillator is a very special class uh, which is characterized by a minimum product between the uncertainties and momentum and position. And it was already known by back in 1926, I think so, from Erwin Schrödinger. Okay, because this, um, this uh, class of wave function uh, is the closest one to the classical problem. So why coherent state? Because psi squared makes just an oscillation as the classical oscillation or oscillator does. So it is the most classical like uh, case of quantum wave functions. All the other wave functions are deviate from the classical behavior. This is the most uh, close to the, to the classical behavior. Technically, the, the uh, coherent states are used mainly in quantum optics and they are defined as the eigenstates of the so-called annihilation operator, the operator that destroys the quantum, uh, the quantum of the harmonic oscillator that goes down, that points downwards um, on the ladder of the energies. Okay, they have a quite complex wave function, but in any case, psi squared of the coherent states is just like a Gaussian. Uh, it has a Gaussian form, and we managed to make to engineer them in such a way that. In one dimension, we had uh, a qubit of 
a qubit of the form alpha, where alpha is a number, and b is another number, and r a coherent state which starts at t equal zero on the left on the right hand side uh, of the oscillation center, and one coherent state on the left. So actually, if you take the inner product between two coherent states, then you find that it is uh, it is in general not uh, zero. So they are not orthogonal to each other. So that, the axis here is distance and the x and psi squared, mm -hmm. psi squared, psi squared, yes. And this is one dimensional. This is the qubit, the Bohmian qubit, where you have this wave function and alpha squared and b squared equals to one according to Born's rule. So because these are the probabilities of finding r or l. Okay. Uh, so we didn't want to deviate from standard quantum mechanics at that point of uh, time, but we wanted to study entanglement, but entanglement uh, has a prerequisite. You must have two or three or a larger number of particles. You cannot be entangled with yourself. Okay. So if we manage to take, we manage to take entangled qubits of that form by taking C1 RL. RL is a tensorial product between the Hilbert space of the first system with the Hilbert space of the second system. Actually, this is like something very close to the so-called Bell state basis of spin qubits. If, uh, zero, one plus one zero over uh, square root of two. And here you see the composition of the Hilbert spaces. So we have now, we can imagine that we have two particles, one along the direction, two qubits, one along the direction uh, of X coordinate and one along the direction of Psi coordinate. And the probability density psi squared of this kind of wave functions depends, has in general this, uh, this shape, this form, okay, but depends on the choice of C1 and C2, the, the statistical weights, okay, C1 and C2. Okay, when C1 equals C2 equals um, SQ, um, square root of two, over two, then you have the maximum, the maximal, the maximal entangled state, and the two blobs, these kind of blobs, are equal; they are identi identical. Now, this is at, at t equals zero. These blobs, this blob, move in the configuration space and move by making Lisazu kind, uh, Lisazu like figures, and sometimes. They, they make a circular motion, they try to make a, a Lissajou, and sometimes they collide. So they collide, they are, uh, th there is a distraction of, the, of, the, of their form, and again, they pass one through the other, and you, they are regenerated, and this motion is perpetual. When you say they move, there's a potential, these are particles, what do you mean? No, 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 this is psi squared. Psi squared, it comes with the, the, time, the, the motion of psi squared. So this is uh, These are particles and they move in a potential. No, 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 no. Yes, the potential of the 2D harmonic oscillator. Hmm. So, no. and, and so since you have a, a time dependent wave function, you have a time dependent psi squared. So the system is two particles in a. Yes. It's, 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 it is a, 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 yes, with no interaction, no interaction between them. It's just a 2D harmonic oscillator. And I say these are can it be applied to real particles like electrons, for example? Or... No, we are not. Uh, we are in the very early states because when you have to deal with electrons, then you have to take into account the spin, uh, their spin. Up to now, we have photons because we don't have. A... Yes, it's it's closer, uh, but I don't want to to go there because actually what we do is that we neglect. Uh, spin. This is actually like quantum mechanics one uh, in the physics department. This is a, a non-relativistic, non-relativistic theory. It has been made. There, there are many extensions of Bohmian mechanics in order to become a Bohmian quantum field theory to become relativistic. But at this stage and at this level, we cannot say anything about very very realistic particles. Okay. So this is actually just a toy model. So these are two particles. What is this? What? These are two this, this is this is this is this is this is yes. This is the psi squared. 
This is the psi squared of the two d harmonic oscillators. One particle, two particles. You can see it as two particles. Okay, there are two particles that oscillate yes. in space. And yes, they are not in space. Interactive. No, they are not interactive. So, but we see uh, we see their joint wave function. And, and we, no, this is no, the, the, nothing more. This is not, the, there are no interactions between them, but we, we see their motion in a joint space. So in this case, what we found with Professor Gondopoulos was unexpected. And we found that we have infinity mainly nodal points. And it was a very special case because we managed to find their position in time analytically. So this was actually something very uh, new and very fruitful for our calculations because it facilitates a lot of the, the, the calculations involved in bone mechanics because we always want to, to find the nodal points at, every, at any time, monitor their evolution, and then find their corresponding X points. In this case, the nodal points and the X points were, inf and of course the X points were infinitely many and it was they were aligned on straight nodal lines, which uh, make rotations inside the configuration space. Sometimes they go to infinity and come back again. Okay, so here, what you see here is a, a collective um, trace of the motion of the nodal points and not of the X points. So this does not uh, represent just the time, but uh, it's the footprint of the nodal trajectories and we tried to make some um, to study its relation with quantum entanglement. It's, it, it's rather technical. What we found then was that in the long run, in the long run, the chaotic trajectories of this model, they were all, uh, they all have the same footprint, common footprint on the configuration space, and we found it. With um, ma by making color plots, we made grids in the configuration space, uh, square grids, and counted the times that the Bohmian particle um, enters every beam. And this is actually this is beam counts here. And we tried to see what happens with the order trajectories because there are always some a uh, small amount of order trajectories here, which depends strongly on the entanglement. But we found that the chaotic trajectories... What is the difference in each panel? Excuse me? You have four panels. Yes. Here, which, here we have... We, because I didn't see the... Uh, I didn't see. <laughs> here we have the case of weak entanglement. So in the, the case of weak entanglement... It's the entanglement that refers to entanglement. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, here in this case, we have a single entanglement. I don't can see exactly the legend to see how small is the entanglement here. But in any case, this is, it is a weak entanglement. Here you see an uh, El Sazu like figure, okay, which is an order trajectory, which is this, this one is an order trajectory. And this one and, and the other three are uh, out of trajectories, so but trajectories that do not escape. Yes, they do not escape from the, the support. And this is a single trajectory. Yes, this is a single trajectory. And then, how do we define it? It is uh, very impressive that uh, a single chaotic trajectory mm -hmm. supports a structure. Of course. Yes. We see in the upper right panel, we see even details. There is a, a kind of like. Uh, and this, uh, yes, it, yes. Whatever you can say. Because, that, and there is a hexagon. That, yes. And entanglement in forming these figures plays um, a crucial role on the uh, on the time that you are going to see the final the final uh, structure. Okay, here. Does the structure have any physical meaning? Yes, actually, actually, the structure is uh, bounded in the places where the Lisa Zou figures. If, if you don't have initially entanglement, if you don't have entanglement, then you have only one blob, and since this blob is made of a coherent state, it just made a Lissazu figure. But we exploit the fact that we can initially take, choose an initially entangled state. Someone brought us an entangled state, and then we have two blobs. These blobs 
are uh, they they want to make Lissazou figures, but at certain times they collide at the center at, around around the origin. So the greener, the yellowish, the the, 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 the hotter, the, the color, larger the, time the larger the, the, the that we find the particle. Yes, the so higher the. Kind of, considered we have here a kind of structure supported by chaotic orbits, which is not so many in the literature. So we could count as one. How to, the, the, the question? I, no, it's not a question. It's a comment. I mean that here we have a case where chaotic trajectories support a structure. Yes. This is uncommon. There are a few cases yes. in the because so I, because study that can do that one. So we have to count this case yes. in the list of cases where chaotic trajectories. Yes, because actually there is a, yes, because this chaotic trajectories. Uh, Somehow it uh, it is counterintuitive. If you have let's say a region where the motion is allowed and mm -hmm. the trajectory is chaotic. If it was a stack of stochastic, you should cover the whole area mm -hmm. if you let it, of course, for a long time. Yeah. And let and it in a uniform way. And then, of course, it will be uniform. Now yes. we have a trajectory yes. that does not do this one, yes. despite that it's characterized as chaotic. Yes, because here... It is counterintuitive. Yeah, it, it, it is a bit counterintuitive. If you measure the uh, Yapunov exponent of this kind of trajectories, then you find that it's positive. It saturates at, uh, at a positive value. but. Uh, again, how does this house emerge? How does this uh, these pictures? And then, okay. and this kind of here we have strong entanglement. Okay, close. Excuse me. No, here one. This one. Here we have strong entanglement, and we have different, uh, different initial conditions that they their long. Uh, time footprint is again uh, characteristic. And, and this is a box. Yes. And no. they are chaotic. They are chaotic. Actually, here they, they sometimes can exit this region, okay, because this is a very long time. Uh, but in quantum mechanics, the motion actually is bounded. This is a bounded system. And they actually, and actually it is bounded by the motion of psi squared. The psi squared is the, actually the probability density of finding the particle. It may be uh, very, very, very small if you go to outside this box. It's not zero, but it's actually practically it is. Classical systems, mm -hmm. orbits that can do such things, mm -hmm. uh, this, they are this what we call sticky units. Mm -hmm. And they can do mm -hmm. that for some time, but not in infinite time. No, I don't it depends on time this figure. Exactly. This is an autonomous, this is non-autonomous okay. flow. So if, if if you plot the same figure for uh, another another time for a, lo a longer time. Long. For longer time. Yes. No, oh no, 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 no. Ah, Excuse me. Okay. This figure yes. is going to be supported if you go t uh towards uh, infinity. It, it's going to actually change. this is a cumulative figure. This is a cumulative figure, it won't change. Uh, ah, it won't no, no, it won't change. No, no, no. It won't it, it is not like classical house when you so will see. It won't yes, change. you won't see it. So we have, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Totally it is not uniform. If you have something that remains in face space places for ever, it won't change. Then how can it be chaotic? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it's yes. It, it, it is counter it, 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 so it, 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 number to it. Actually, okay. if you want to make it uh, autonomous, then you have to add another. Uh, oh, whatever you calculate the Lyapunov exponent. I mean, mm -hmm. How do you calculate the Lyapunov? Exactly. In, in so, what way do you calculate the Lyapunov? If you have the time, yes. <laughs> and the what is the deviation? The deviation increases with time, and so it, it produces this figure. Yes, I, I, yes I, I, exactly. I, well, yes, and uh, actually, yes, it, it, it saturates at a, at a positive value, not very large. Okay. And we want to find uh, the relation between entanglement and the Yapunov exponent. That is. How do you is... calculate the Yapunov if it, if it is non autonomous the system? You can make it an autonomous. You a, make a, it a, yes, a project. Project. yes. Mm -hmm. you, make you can always make autonomous. It's actually two and a half. And then it's yeah. uh, yeah, uh, yeah. actually. There's time. a method of Giorgili that explains the history. Yes, so actually, any, any dynamical system can be brought in an autonomous uh, by adding a, a third uh, dimension, which actually is time. And then the Lyapunov uh, saturation. Saturation, yes, yeah. Uh, from the very first work of uh, Christos Thymiopoulos, it was shown that there are 
both orders. And in the black region? In the black region, it, it's, it's real. No. It's dark. It's dark. No, yes, because here, you, huh? you, can, you, do, you don't find the particle here. Mm -hmm. You do not find the particle here. The most interesting thing is that uh, classically, this is a potential is integral. In here, in exactly. In the is, exactly. Uh, this is why. Is the most is the exactly. This is the main, the main, uh, the main fact that is always pointed out by Professor Dondoblos, because you have a totally. It will be more interesting if you can compare uh, you start with non-integral system classically. What happens in Bohemia? The, uh, but there, uh, it's more difficult because you must solve the. If you do, now you have analytical. If you don't have entanglement, if you don't have entanglement, if you take an initially product state. This is also an uh, integrable system. You find independent, you find the Sazu figures, nothing more. In order to see uh, production of house, you have to start with an entanglement state. It's not clear to me that you have an integrated. You have an initial state with two peaks, and they are equal. This is what we call strong entanglement. Okay. What does it mean, single trajectory? You choose one, one part, one, part. At one position yes. in that distribution, yes. and you follow it. Yes. Then this is the top left. Then you choose another initial yeah. position. And we see that these it, are single trajectories. Yes. Of in this single initial condition, we want to see what does a, uh, what does a, port, a, a, a single Bohmian trajectory in time, because you, you cannot have a collective uh, study of house without knowing what uh, every single part it does. The, the nodal point exponent complex uh, mechanism, uh, in order to see it and check it, you have to see every every uh, single trajectory. But actually, what you see is that all the chaotic trajectories they they go to they 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 tend to a common practically. What equal. do you take simply? The initial condition, nothing more. Only initial condition. This is for a given entanglement. We have a degree of entanglement. Say it is, uh, for example, you can say that this is uh, the the bell state. We have for maximal the, entanglement. For the same entanglement. For the same entanglement. So you take the same. For the same wave function, the same. you change the initial. So you take the, the same picture. You take the same yes. picture. Oh, okay. Then we see here, what we see here is a distribution of particles. I I think it is about 5,000 th th particles or 5,000 particles. And we tried, this is a superposition of the individual color plots. And we see, yeah. So this is the wave function. This is the size square what we're seeing here. This is this is no this is a, no it's not the size square. This, this is the distribution. So this is size square. And actually, if you want, no, okay, this is actually what is produced by by the motion of size square. This is size square. Is, is it equal to size? No, this is not equal to size square. But this is the distribution, you said. Yes. Size square gives you the distribution of particles yes. after a long, a long time. Well, it, it, the question, I, 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 this is how many, times, how many times, how many times the trajectory has passed, has passed. This is exactly what is psi square. This okay. Is probability okay. No, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Actually, this. Of course. Of course. You okay. have you have Lisa Zoo figures. You have Lisa Zoo figures of the two blobs, which make. This position, uh, this motion, and some at some times they collide. So at the corners you find uh, the, the four red ho hot spots. Why? We, why at the four corners specifically? You have more 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 problems. Than because you. actually the Lisazu figure at the corners, uh, the, the velocity of psi squared uh, is uh, smaller. Ah, okay. and, and whenever you have a smaller velocity, then you right. will find. Uh, you have a greater probability and to find there's a the part. Interpolation because with the with the two we have some uh, interpolation. And, interpolation. Uh, okay. In, in the, the middle of the center, so you have. Uh, in the middle of the center, we found this this strange, uh, not so strange, this pattern. No, interpolation on what? Not interpolation. I mean, I do not think so. Okay. Interference. No, interference. Interference. Is it you have interference. Yes, you have. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. I, I, you are uh, talking about the collision events. You have the the one block and the other block. They come. They collide. Remind they are two slit experiments. Ah, okay. Okay. And then they are gener regenerated. They go to the corner again. They rotate and again after some time they collide again. So this was uh, the case of. 
they are best thing. Actually, these are more difficult cases where we had a small entanglement, weak entanglement, and we tried to find with professor um, uh, from which entanglement uh, degree and up, uh, we take almost the same uh, long time pattern with uh, with the bell states with a, the high with the high degree entanglement wave functions, and ah okay, in the case of C two equal uh, zero point two, then the blob one of the two blobs is very large. It's very large, okay, and um, the other one is actually just a perturbation in its motion. When they collide, the big blob uh, does it gets uh, deformed, but not in such a way as in the case of strong entanglement. So, if we tried to to take initial positions, initial positions are uh, multi-particle distribution of the of the um, lower right and big blob, then we find uh, the, the same uh, figure as in the previous slides. But if we take the other one of the upper blob, if you, uh, if you take a, uh, an ensemble of particles in the small blob of uh, low entanglement wave function, then you find different things. Actually, we, you don't, um, here you don't go according to Born's rule. So, just push it up. Okay. Uh, so, this was a simple quantum system characterized by very complex dynamics. What happens in systems with many degrees of freedom? Then we tried to see order and chaos in two qubits, which was the previous case, three qubits and four qubits. So, we had now uh, the introduction of new variables. So, you have X, Y, uh, Z and W in the case of four qubits. And what we found is that house, the production of house, uh, depends on the degree of entanglement, which is actually parameterized by C2. And when C2 goes here up close to 0 0.7, which is the bell state. This is the percentage. Yes, this is the percentage of chaotic trajectories inside the Born distribution. So if you take 5,000, 10,000 particles, distribute Bohmian particles distributed according to Born's rule, then you will see that if you calculate the Yapunov exponents and you make the chaotic the analysis of house, that for a given uh, C2 value of the entanglement parameter, uh, house comes uh, faster whenever the entanglement becomes uh, longer. This was the first result. And if you add more and more qubits, then you find that as you increase the dimensionality of uh, the configuration space, then for a given C2, you have many chaotic, uh, more chaotic trajectories in, a, in the same distribution, in the same Born distribution. The larger the C2, uh, no, uh, uh, my, my fault, my fault, I, I, I apologize. If you have two qubits, you find a percentage of chaotic trajectories inside the distribution of Bonjour. Okay, then you add another one. Then you find that for, for the same value of C2, you have more chaotic trajectories. So the dimensionality, the number of the qubits, increases uh, the, the proportion of chaotic trajectories for a given degree of entanglement. Then uh, the, uh, all the previous results were found be somewhere between 2019 and 2021. And uh, last year, uh, by trying to understand, uh, to understand the, the portrait, the, uh, the shape of the Lyapunov characteristic number, uh, whenever a Bohmian particle comes close to the nodal point, the stretching number undergoes a positive shift. So, uh, in the long run, the cumulative effect of many, many uh, scattering events between the, bom the Bohmian particle and the X point uh, results to a positive Lyapunov characteristic number. So this is the main result. But 
there were always there were always some cases where we found some deviations, some some uh, positive shifts of the character of the Lyapunov like characteristic number of the stretching number of the stretching number that could not be explained very well with the X point. There were not very the the particle was not very close to an X point, and but always these cases had a small shift and not a very large positive positive shift. Uh, so what we found is that not only the unstable points in the frame of reference of the moving nodal point uh, play a significant role, they play the significant role. The X points are the main responsible for the production of house. But there are also, I asked the professor, don't we have unstable points in the original, in the initial frame of reference? And what we found is, yes, there are some unstable, not as unstable points, fixed points of the flow, and we call them the Y points. So the, the nodal point X point complex mechanisms should be augmented with the unstable points of the original flow and not of that in the frame of reference of the new moving nodal point. So here you have the nodal point and this is X and Y. It's not U and V. It's not the, the moving frame of reference. It's the original frame of reference. And you see this kind of thing. And what we, uh, we called it the Y point. And here you see a particle that comes this is actually a superposition. The, this is a frozen vector field, and this is the, the trajectory of a particle. It's just a sketch. Uh, and you see a Bohmian vortex. But here you also see this kind of unstable um, fixed point. And here is the stretching number. Uh, and the distance between the chaotic Bohmian trajectory as a function of time and the distance between the trajectory and the y point and the x point. And we see that there are main, some main large events which correspond to the encounter between the trajectory and the x point. And the lower ones, the smaller ones, uh, are made mainly due to the uh, encounter with the y point. So now we believe that with these two kinds of unstable points, uh, we can explained or explain or understand all practically all the profile of the stretching numbers. There were found also some cases in the in the case of the single nodal point where the y point this this point here does not let the chaotic trajectory to pass through this vertical line which is the psi axis. And we call that, actually, professor, we call that uh, partial ergodicity. All the chaotic trajectories in this case, if they start on the left hand side, they will make, uh, they, they, they will have a, a common footprint of this form, and all the others just a symmetric of the other form. So, actually, this, was, uh, this result was uh, totally out of the blue because we never found a deviation from this rule. It is some, and we note that they are all separated by this line, and this line is the line of the Y point. Y point makes an oscillatory, oscillatory uh, motion along this axis and changes its form in order to not let a chaotic trajectory pass from the left hand side to the right hand side. And this was called by Professor Parson de Grabeck. It was the first time that he saw it. We, try, we, we, uh, we checked thousands of initial conditions. And we didn't find um, an, a deviation. In our paper back in 2023 in Entropy, we tried to exploit all the, our previous knowledge uh, on uh, Bohmian House in order to count the number of the chaotic and the ordered trajectories inside a realization of Bohm's rule. So we found that there are infinitely many cases. There are cases where the bond, the, uh, we have dominance of order. And here you see what happens when you have a single nodal point wave function. If you count the chaotic and the ordered trajectories, you will see that the ordered trajectories are absolutely, are about 
95 um, the red are the ordered and the blue are the chaotic. Bones rule in a case with two, uh, in another case, I think it is a case with two single, with two nodal points where we find balance between order and house. They are almost, they are almost 50, 50 and a very complex wave function with uh, many hermit polynomials producing in many nodal points where here you have the dominance of house. Here you see a lot of chaotic trajectories and very small number of order trajectories. There are 10,000 10, initial conditions, the case of multiple nodal points distributed according to Bond's rule at t equals zero. Okay, so we have integrated all of them and we have found that the blue ones are going to be chaotic, while the red ones are going to be um, ordered. So now, uh, in our last job, which has been uh, accepted in the house of and fractals and is uh, in press, uh, we try. We have never solved practically any problem, but we have clever questions. We make clever questions. We try to study all the role of house and order by making simulations, as always, in the dynamics of quantum observables and Bohm's rule in Bohmian quantum mechanics. So the main question is, OK, you see house, you see order. So what's the point? It's not classical mechanics. A single particle here uh, does not make any sense. You have to always work with the average values. So you have to take distributions. You have to take the Bohmian, the Bohm distribution and see what is the role of house and order inside the board distribution and on the, on the prediction of the correct results on the average values. So this is a more technical uh, work where we have applied the nodal point exponent complex mechanism and we try to see in different cases with different proportions between order and chaotic trajectories how they behave and give the correct results. So. The research in our center is ongoing uh, with professor, of course, myself. And now we have a new collaboration with Miquel Pajao and Henrik Santos Lima from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro, which is actually the, the team, the group uh, of Professor Constantino Tsalis. And we have a new um, graduate student, Xenophon Cardiophilus, which made, who makes his bachelor thesis with me. So the, uh, the questions that we try to answer, they are very, very difficult, is what is the order, the role of the order and how the trajectories in the prediction of the average values of quantum observables. The second question made always by Professor Kondopoulos is the comparison between Bohm and House and classical House, because you see that you have a classically integrable system, which if you take an initial entangled state, then you um, you find chaotic trajectories. And again, professor with crystals, uh, I think they already had found back in 2005, I think so, uh, cases which are chaotic, chaotic in the classical regime and ordered in the quantum regime. So uh, if Bohmian mechanics uh, makes the correct predictions, probably the, uh, there is a relation between Bohmian house in classical house. Actually, this is an ultimate uh, ultimate goal of uh, nonlinear physics to make the connection between classical and quantum real. So what we do now, and we are all, almost already uh, ready to, to publish, is a new study where we have what Manthos said, study of interacting systems, which are chaotically. So we have the oscillators, and we have a perturbation, epsilon times x times psi squared, which is something that has already been used by, by your team. Uh, and the ultimate goal for me, because I come from the modern quantum system community, is to make a transition to open quantum systems, to see what house, what's the role of house when you have dissipation and disentanglement and decoherence. So thank you for being here. Okay, okay.
So if there are questions, then please uh, go ahead. We had some discussion during the, the talk, but if there are further questions, or if uh, there are someone who wants to ask for here, yeah. okay. So, okay. Uh, if uh, Yanis wants to ask something, please. Just a comment or question. In, in the real world, there is dissipation, which means that the number of particles is not conserved. Uh, I mean, okay. So, there are particles are lost, or that's, that's one thing. But yeah. in the real world, we also have what we call dark count, that your detectors, your observers, measure out of Nowhere. Nowhere. And this is a fundamental limitation of the quantum measurement. Yeah. How you can you say zero, for example, probability of measuring something? And your detector keeps measuring. Yes. Actually, we consider these issues. On one hand, uh, losing particles. On the other hand, uh, generating fake particles or whatever. Virtual particles. But, uh, or fake, because the detector just yeah. produces them. Actually, this is actually what you, we said in the work that we've done together uh, last year. Okay, we, this is a very premature level of quantum mechanics to deal with this kind of thing. And uh, the conservation of quantum particles in order to have non-conserved quantum particles as uh, in reality, then you have to, to deal with relativistic systems. Uh, here we are doing closed systems. We don't have the coherence effects. We don't have dissipation. There are toy models in this case. In this case, uh, if you want to study cases where the number of particles is not conserved, then as far as I know, you have to deal with the relativistic form of quantum mechanics. Standard quantum mechanics, there is a conservation of particles. There is no mechanism here that can lead to, to, to an instantaneous absence of a destruction of particles. But this is something that happens in real life yes. without any relativity. For example, you do the, EP, the, the EPR experiment mm -hmm. and you want to measure something and you do not measure. Your detector does not measure. So you're losing particles because your detectors have a finite uh, yeah. detection probability. Mm -hmm. This is fundamentally yeah. in nature. And on the other hand, your detector just counts out of nowhere. So the issue of losing particles or generating particles is not something that is relativistic or something. It's it's nature. This is how nature works. I don't think that uh, actually it's it's about how measurement tools work. Yes, but how the but all of what you're describing here comes to us through the measurement. This yes. is a theory in some mathematical world. Yeah, I mean. And then what we see as quantum mechanics is comes through the measurement. And the measurement has these uh, deficiencies or these limitations. You are not talking about loopholes. No, 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 no. You are, you are about perfect measurement, measurement tools. There is no perfect measurement. Yeah, actually, tools. Yes, perfect. Uh, I, I, this is a, the toughest question of all. This is a fundamental question. What is the role of the, the, the uh, the measuring device, and if you if and you have to, to repeat, just to remind everyone what we what, what we did. The conclusion, our conclusion is, which may be completely wrong, that quantum mechanics may be an illusion of our detectors of course. because our detectors are flawed. Of course, and and the absence of quantum house and the definition of quantum house may be may be the the, the first step towards a more general theory, because if the classical world uh, is full of house. Uh, what is the transition from quantum world to the classical, uh, to the to the classical house? Uh, you say we say that the Schrödinger equation is linear, but the Schrödinger equation does not talk about particles itself. It, it talks about probabilities, and a particle is not a probability. A particle is a particle, uh, at least for myself, okay, or for my, my kind of brain, okay. So uh, it is uh, it is necessary to understand the. Uh, 
and to expand the quantum mechanics because it's very difficult for someone to understand uh, the realistic systems from a quantum point of view. If you take the measurement device to be highly quantum in, in its nature, then the, the, the cut, the Schrodinger's cut does not even itself recognize if it is dead or alive. It sees superpositions, but of course, uh, uh, this is not correct. What, what is the ultimate goal and fundamental in, in the foundations of quantum mechanics is what is the fundamental, what is the foundation of quantum mechanics? And if it quantum mechanics is just an effective theory and not a fundamental theory, and they are all have to be explained simultaneously in order to, to find a correct result for the realistic systems. For example, and my final comment, this kind of non-linearities are deterministic. You have deterministic house here, but okay, in a quantum regime, what happens in open quantum systems when there are also instabilities came coming out of nowhere, which are of stochastic nature, because you have noise, and noise is the source of the coherence, and you have dissipation which is actually uh, uh, the source of quantum friction. But again, it's very, very difficult. And in all of, my, all of my works with Professor Kondopoulos, the referees, they push us and they try, they, they try to force us to, to, to write something about the open quantum systems. But we cannot say anything. Bohmian quantum mechanics has already been expanded in open quantum systems. There is a book from the Spanish team of Oriolus, Alvareda, Benzeni, very good book, but they do not talk about the nature of the trajectories. They just make, um, uh, they, uh, they just state some results which are of general nature. But no man tries to enter the realm of quantum, Bohemian quantum house, because the simulation sounds very, very, very difficult. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, you think there is a necessity to give a new definition of chaos? In the quantum uh, the, case, which uh, it has a new physical meaning, which is not the same. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I want to have a clear definition of what is chaos. What is chaos? What is chaos? What is chaos? What is chaos? Actually, back in 1983, or the year that I was born, I think so, Michael Berry talked about quantum chaology and not quantum chaos because no one understands quantum chaos. Uh, in the absence of trajectories, in the absence of non-linearity, it's just a difficult and a different notion. So what they do, the, the mainstream uh, uh, tendency is to take a classically chaotic system okay, and study the, its footprint, the, the footprint of the chaotic regions of the classical chaotic system on the, um, the distribution of the eigen uh, or eigenvalues, which are the energies, and they have, I think, uh, this um, Gats Wheeler, uh, Professor Gats Wheeler and Professor Robnik and Professor Cassati. They always try to, to make a link between the observed differences between in the spectrum of the, of yeah. the energies of the quantum system, which are whose root is back to classical house. And they try to understand. So they have some Poissonian distributions, some non Poissonian distributions. They try to connect it with a random matrix theory, which was back in the world of Edward Teller and uh, Eugene Wigner. Here we are making our way, we, we follow our own path, which is clear from the point of view of what is how. We have a trajectory and we try to understand it. We always get the correct results. So we try to understand what the role has. In the prediction of the correct, correct the physical meaning. The physical meaning. Different the physical meaning. The, classical. the physical meaning, of course, is very difficult to, to, to say something in general, but we are trying to, 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 to understand the theory from a solid mm -hmm. uh, background between the definitions. So if you ask me what is house, I will tell you exactly the same thing as you do. Okay, with a different kind of equations. But okay, it's not Hamilton. That is it's not, not Hamilton. Okay. But it is house, it has sensitivity and then it's in conditions. You have a topological transitivity, you have all these kinds of things. But it needs to be studied. But so, the moment, in order to say something like this, for me, you must compare this with other quantum, yeah. uh, other methods for quantum here, mm -hmm. for example, 
uh, as issue state theory, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite a, uh, quite a conversation with Michael Berry, the part now mm -hmm. collaboration, uh, which has a very strong opinion in this room. Um, has a direct share for, the, for this. And uh, we use, for example, Hayashi presentation. Yeah. Now we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it would be very interesting if you can compare this mm -hmm. approach with Hayashi representations using beginner approach. Mm -hmm. And, yes, uh, you have. I think you have two several. Uh, no, I guess not Hussini. Okay, uh, yeah. my, 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 no, it no, has no. also uh, it's used the method of Hussini. It's uh, related. Yeah, but actually, this is uh, what you say about we talk about is a quantum, uh, quantum, uh, quantum phase formulation quantum mechanics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. a phase, the phase space yeah. formulation it's of quantum mechanics that you don't have with the sequence there. This okay, is, you have distribution for me yes. to compare this. The trajectories uh, with the distribution yeah, of, yeah. That, of that. Yeah, and yeah. in phase space formulation of quantum mechanics, you have the limit h bar go to zero. This is where you find the limit h bar going to zero. And uh, everyone keeps asking me, what is this limit? And actually, it's not h bar going to zero, it's h bar over the classical action. Going to zero, you have to you have to compare it with something in order to ah, say yeah, the limit is because sometimes if you paper from my yeah. about this. Uh, okay, I don't want to talk about it uh, yeah. online yeah, because there are uh, many many years about the bar paper in four five years that uh, yes. also we had discussions with this with uh, Schubert and uh, Wiggins. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, and uh, the technical detail, how which the creation scheme uh, will be used the, close the, to the nodal force yes. because we have stiff okay. and very stiff. Uh, 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 I, I have used uh, this. In the you have the, the, the I, you, I always use the L soda with the BDF method. The uh, L soda, I the Livermore, yes. yeah, yeah. and we are always working with absolute uh, error tolerance about 10 power minus 12. Mm -hmm. A relative error tolerance, uh, 12 power uh, minus 10, something like that, because uh, very close to the nodal point, uh, every integrator breaks down. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. It, it has embedded the, the atoms and the PDF yeah. integrators. So if you know and we know that the problem is stiff uh, by definition, then uh, you go with a PDF integrator. But sometimes, well, not sometimes, very, uh, it's very often to, to see that the, the computer cannot uh, integrate for uh, from a, a certain time region and above. And uh, okay. sometimes in the Python library, Python library of this uh, method has a problem with uh, speed. And I found that this in Julia is better. Try this in Julia and you will see that it has... Uh, okay, so... I think uh, since I don't see anyone who wants to ask something. Okay. Oops, yeah. Then uh, we thank uh, the speaker again. And so stop, sir. End meeting. End meeting for all.